Hello guys, good day. Welcome to join ApacheCon 2021. This is Jin. I'm from the Milverse project. Um, we have built up a global community of around 1,000 community users in less than two years. So today I would like to share the things we learned in building this Milverse open source community. First, let me introduce myself to you. Um, my name is Jin Gu. I'm a database engineer for around 16 years. I'm currently the evangelist of the Milvers Open Source Project. Also, I am a voting member in the Technical Advisory Council of the RFAI and Data Foundation. Um, as my full-time job, I am a partner in the Zillus company, I mean a, a startup company focusing on unstructured data processing. Uh, my career history before Zillis, I worked for Huawei um, around six months and for Morgan Stanley around eight years and IBM for around five years and also I spent one year with ICBC. I received my undergraduate degree in computer science uh, from the Peking University. Um, before we share the experience and the lesson we learned from building this community, let's first take a look um, what exactly is the Milvus Open Source Project. So basically, Milvus is an embedding vector database, uh, which means it's a embedding serving infrastructure software for production AI applications. So the key project milestones uh, includes um, we released Milvus 0.1 uh, in April 2019 and we open sourced Milvus project in October 2019 and then later just a couple months later we contributed the Milvus project into the Linux Foundation um, Earth AI and Data Foundation that was um, January 2020 and this year this June uh, we graduate Milvus project from Earth AI and Data Foundation as a graduate project. So on GitHub, we have around 143 contributors, uh, over 7.2 thousand GitHub stars, and almost 1,000 GitHub folks um, on DocHub, where we host our doc image for um, download. Um, there's already uh, over 410,000 downloads and also we covered um, community developers um, over 2.3 thousand uh, including 900 more than 900 people on slack and uh, around 1,800 1, people in the WeChat group so there are there are almost around 1,000 um, companies they're building their production AI applications upon Milvus Vector Database um, including IGE, Kuaishou, Xiaomi, Line so all these different um, companies they're building Milvus um, they're building AI applications um, upon Milvus um, mainly for um, these type of um, uh, application scenarios like computer vision um, like Ai Chi, <coughs> they're they're using Milvus for like building a visual search type of application scenario, and also they're using Milvus in uh, personal recommender systems, and also uh, for people like Message Bird and uh, Smart News, they're using Milvus for uh, in a natural language processing scenario, especially some people. Um, they're using Milvus um, with, uh, in the uh, conversational AI uh, scenario, which, uh, which means uh, build up certain uh, customer service chatbot to, uh, to improve the customer experience when they are um, having issue with your product. And also uh, Milvus could support a computational uh, chemistry um, scenario, which means you can perform molecular structure analysis on Milvus. So we also have a session about the uh, technical part of the Milvus project um, that 
that session is presented by Xiao Fan Luan. So if you, you, you're curious about the uh, uh, technical behind the movers and the uh, typical uh, business scenarios of Miller's project, uh, please, it's welcome to join that session as well. Yeah, remember we just open source movers for less than two years, very close to two years. But we already have 1,000 companies, they're building movers with, uh, they're building their production AI applications with movers. I mean, that's a very positive feedback from the community. So um, what did we make it? Um, now I will share something with you and uh, hope this will be helpful when you start to uh, build your own open source community. Okay, so here are the things um, we did and uh, it worked. At least we believe it worked. Uh, first, we need to build up a plan and uh, review it regularly. So this is the plan I, 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 I wrote down for the uh, Mirvus open source community promotion. So there are major two parts in this plan. Is the first one is the developer relations. Another is contents, how to generate contents and what, what is the strategy. So for the developer relations, that's basically build up the uh, backbone of the community. Um, you around the uh, governance policy, um, the project committee, and also we need to collaborate with uh, the Linux Foundation as Milvers is a um, project hosted by the Linux Foundation now. Um, second, um, we need to engage the developers more uh, frequent. And also this, is, th th this will certainly help to um, grow the, um, the developer community size. So for engaging the developer, we can utilize different uh, uh, strategy and uh, ways. For example, we can use those uh, um, instant messaging tools for the online engagement. Uh, we actually use Slack for the overseas community. And uh, uh, we use WeChat group for the community in China. And also uh, you can think about to set up a, a, a blog publication, for example, on Medium and uh, organize those regular AMA to keep, to keep the project warm among the developer community. And also, um, we very actively attend those uh, public, public speech opportunities like um, those open conference and some live chat and uh, uh, we organize our own meetup seminar and also we plan to launch the Hexum. And also, work with other community and foundation you also need an outreach champion to, uh, to, to, to collaborate with different people in the open source communities. Um, so the contents, I want to, uh, I want to just uh, remind, it, remind uh, guys like contents is very important because um, contents is how you attract people to join the uh, community. It's a very direct way and also how you keep them uh, stay in the community. Content is still very important. I mean, if you keep generating valuable contents from time to time, then people will feel like, oh, this is a, a place I can learn something, I can share something, and they will, they 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 will like to stay with you guys uh, uh, more longer. Um, but just write up the plan is not all the things. I mean, that's actually just the start of, of the whole story. I mean, the key is to um, continuously review and uh, adjust the plan immediately when you think there's something changed and there's a better idea. So, in his word, um, use based ceremony to conduct your community operations. So, once we have this um, structural way to um, track our effort, evaluate our uh, performance. Then we need to move to the next important thing is to answer the, the first question or the key question about our project, uh, which I call it as we need to elaborate the project value position. So which means we need to answer this question. What is the compelling reason to use our project? from the uh, developer perspective. 
So I understand when we're talking about open source um, project, I mean, people usually think about we should be more collaborative. We don't want to be too competitive. Yeah, I understand that and I totally agree. I mean, we should encourage collaboration uh, between different open source projects. But um, this is very important to, um, to clarify what is exactly the value position of your open source project. I mean, we want to attract developers into our community. We want, we want them to use the project and uh, to build a project with us. But why they join the community? Certainly, it is not because you are a nice person. I mean, you think about that. When Linux just started the Linux project, I mean, Linux never be a nice people, right? But people still, developer and users still join the Linux project because there is compelling reason they want to use the Linux project. So this is very important. We need to, we need to figure out what is the uh, compelling reason for our project. So you can, you can try to answer this question from these angles, like, um, for example, what problem are we trying to solve? So what's the definition? What's the definition of the problem? And why it matters, how it is important, and uh, what is the scope of the project? And also you can uh, do some um, market analysis or competitive analysis. So we can uh, summarize, summarize the uh, comparison between our project and the others. I mean, maybe it's uh, uh, existing solutions or other people are also uh, trying to solve the same problem as we do. So what's the difference between uh, our project and their solutions? I mean, that's very important for uh, users to understand what's the value of this project and then they can decide if they want to join the community and uh, work with you. Okay, let's use Mulevers project as an example. Um, let's see how we um, elaborate the value position of Mulevers. Um, this is a community session so I'm trying to avoid too much technical details here. Uh, but, uh, you know, this uh, so I have to bring up some technical details here. So Mulevers is a um, vector database serving the embedding vectors generated by those um, deep learning models. So um, the vector database is very um, critical and fundamental uh, component for a production AI applications. So in this way, um, we, we tell our community users um, about the value of Mulevers is Mulevers vector database is high performance, which means you can uh, run it with lower hardware cost. And uh, um, Mulevers vector database can support for billion scale of embedding vectors and including the distributed uh, capabilities. So this is all aiming for a production AI um, application scenarios um, by making this value position. It's just not you, you give a statement and that, that's all. We have to um, providing uh, support evidence for, to, to, to support all these value positions. For example, um, we keep making different um, as much as clarification as we can in different um, scenarios and uh, whenever we, we went to certain conference to share movers. So we will emphasize this again and again. And also uh, we performed a um, very comprehensive benchmark test uh, in the vector similarity search area to demonstrate the performance and the capability of the movers project using that relatively a standard test case. And also, we contributed the project into the Linux Foundation to show our openness. Uh, we welcome people to join and uh, build a Mulevers project together. Especially, we also, um, I also draw some um, diagram like this. So, um, this is a uh, very um, high-level picture about how you compose a 
production AI applications. So you have um, data preparation, data preparation phase, you have model training phase, you have model optimization phase, and you have model serving phase when you go to production. And here is where, uh, this is the place where Milva's vector database play a role in the, just behind it, just behind uh, model serving. Um, Milva's vector database will serving for the embedding vectors. So by using this kind of diagram, we just make people to understand um, where is the position of Mulva's project in the open source AI ecosystem and also what's the uh, scope of the Mulva's project like model serving is not part of Mulva's project if you want to uh, transform the unstructured data for example images into uh, embedding vectors you need to uh, utilize the uh, model serving component to achieve that so by by draw by draw this kind of diagram, um, we make it um, much clearer for our users to understand how Mulvers, where, where what's the uh, value position of Mulvers, and uh, um, what's it's uh, what, what what's the border of what's the boundary of the uh, project. Uh, I understand different projects have different challenges, so you probably um, need a different way to. Um, present what's your uh, what's the value position of your project but just to uh, spend as much time as it, 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 it needs because this is very important this is the all this this is actually the start of the open source community I mean we find the same we f we share the same reason why we're building this and uh, we want to be together and work together So once we have this um, compelling reasons listed and the uh, users, um, they started to uh, come across to the uh, community, then uh, we need to think about it's a, it's a, uh, how to inspire our users and how to enable those users. I mean, um, I'm talking about create those tutorial and live demos because not all the users know how to use the project i mean the hardcore users they uh, very likely they know how to use your project and they can uh, acquire your project into their application scenarios very quickly but most people when they came into the community they know something they know this project might help them and they are interested in this project but they don't understand a lot of details behind it uh, for example, the first step: how to, uh, how I can use this project to help, to help my work. So, um, it's very helpful to create those tutorial and live demos, and also uh, when you create these um, contents, please first focus on the most popular topics in your area. So, for example, in 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 Mulvers, um I mean, in the production AI application scenarios, um, we found the most, um, I mean, the topic people uh, like most is how to build a uh, reverse image search system, uh, which means you, uh, you build up a visual search system and the search, ba uh, search based on the content within the image or videos. So you can see here, this is just part of the tutorial and live demos we created for the um, for the Milvers project and on the right side you can see it's um, the, the if the effect is pretty pretty notable um, we have two repo we have the code repo and we have the bootcamp repo there are separated repo um, there's a history behind this but it's also help us to gather the metrics pretty 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 easy for example, this is the code repo, and uh, although we have more people went to the code repo, but if you see the average page view per visit, it's around nine. I mean, each visitor they averagely uh, view the nine pages. But if you look at the bootcamp repo, a visitor 
um, will averagely um, view 16 pages, almost two times than more than the uh, code repo. And also, if you look at the views, it's, um, it's, 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 it's also a really high number compared to the code repo. So, I mean, those tutorial and the live demos are very valuable and very helpful to our community users. So we always need to think about how to create these contents to inspire and enable the users. Okay, um, next thing is to keep the project hot on GitHub. So I just want to um, bring up two things, two points here. Uh, the first is to have a continuous commit history. Uh, this is also a criteria of uh, the uh, among the uh, graduation criteria of RFAI and Data Foundation. So um, when we go to GitHub and uh, uh, visit a new open source project, I mean a lot of people will um, will 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 make judgment on the uh, open source project um, based on the GitHub stars. Um, but I mean, as you spend more time with the community, you will find that GitHub stars actually. Um, I mean, it, it didn't mean too too many things, but it's a good indicator. But it didn't mean too many things. I usually will take take a look on the commit history, and uh, this is a a better um, how to say it's a better indicator for how um, how active is this project in the development perspective because I mean when an open source project run uh, for years maybe it's already get matured and uh, now people are just fixing small bugs then um, that's uh, that that's one type of open source project and uh, another kind of open source project as I'm uh, as I showed here, it's a commit history, commit history of Mulas project. I mean, this is just to uh, tell people this is a very active project, and uh, we are continuously have a lot of things we need to do on the roadmap. And uh, welcome to join. So, I think a, a continuous commit history is to show the uh, healthy and to show the uh, uh, potential of uh, open source project. Another thing is to uh, release more often, at least once a month, at minimum, I would say. So uh, we have been open source for almost two years, and we have made uh, 23 releases uh, once a month. But actually, this is not enough. I mean, if you take a look on some very popular Python open source project, uh, when they uh, open source for two years they have already made around over 500 releases I mean release is also a very um, very good indicator for how active this open source project is and uh, I'm not for sure but I get a feeling like um, the continuous commit history plus the how often you made a release will certainly uh, infect, um, will, will, will certainly impact if uh, the uh, recommender algorithm of GitHub. I mean, more if your project is more active, so I think that will be uh, more likely to be picked up by the uh, GitHub trending. <laughs> so, yeah, keep the project hot on GitHub and uh, uh, once, I mean, it's not only just show how active it is and also to attract more people uh, to, to, to join the community. Um, if, I mean, just by chance it's get picked up, pick up by the GitHub training, then you will get more traffic onto, into your open source repo and uh, that's definitely help a lot. Now it's the uh, last and the most important thing. I mean, I'm keeping say, I'm, I'm keep saying the most important thing is actually these things are all pretty m very important from my perspective. Um, so the last point I want to I, I want to remind you 
guys are um, to build up the community, to build up active open source community, it takes time. Um, we will not always receive positive and notable results. So uh, we need to be patient and uh, keep working on the right things and continuously review uh, the effect and uh, to make adjustment immediately. So uh, these two charts I'm, I'm sharing here is um, uh, at the bottom one, it's the uh, website traffic to our project project website, which is Mivos.io. So you can see here we fr we start from this point. It's when that that is that that is the time we just open source and no visitor to our open source website at all, and uh, we occasionally get mention on uh, Hacker News, and and you can see there's a tremendous traffic from Hacker News by that time, um, but you know those um, you cannot pr promote again and again um, on Hacker News or those social media channels because. Even you are doing a, a great job, and uh, you are you are doing a very meaningful job. But um, I mean that that that's not the way to to mention yourself again and again on those channels. So once the I mean every mention on those social medias, they do just a valid period, and once that period expires, so you can see our like the the website traffic drops. But if but we, we keep doing the things, we keep action our plans and we keeping um, generating the contents, we keep uh, writing the codes and you can see here uh, the traffic will get better and better slightly. And at a certain point um, this year, I think it's, it's much better and we already uh, back to I mean achieve the new records for the visitors so this is just an example about um, we need to keep we, we need to keep keep performing and uh, uh, some 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 events on the uh, um, social media uh, that can certainly help to um, to draw, to to attract um, a lot of traffic in a very uh, small period of time, but in the long term, it's it's all about how how you um, invest your time um, and effort on the community building. This is a long run. Also, on the right side, it's similar. This is our star history of the Mivos project. So when we just open sourced. You can imagine we we promote our open we, we promote our Mivas project everywhere among our uh, colleagues, ex colleagues, friends, and college classmates. So, yeah, shamelessly promotion can drive um, the star growing tr tremendously, tremendously in a short time. But in the long run, um, it's all about your your day-to-day -day work and your day-to-day -day effort and your day-to-day -day review and be patient and keep doing the right things and uh, it, it, it will it will continuously grow the community and at a certain point when I mean all the effort all the previous effort they will they they, are, they will be accumulated and at a certain point it will help to accelerate the uh, the, the growth rate. So I think after after I mean one half years um, keep doing the right things. I think in this year, uh, in the recent couple of months, um, uh, we will see a, a a speed up in the uh, a trend. So that's our example, and I believe um, other successful project also um, have the similar kind of growth rate okay so that's all the valuable tips i i learned from running the um, milvas community um, but there is also things i wish we did better um, i listed three points here um, the first one is still regarding release 
Um, I mean, if possible, um, people should, tr should, should try to release once a week. Uh, but I mean, different project has um, different project have different um, style or, or challenges. For example, Mulvus is a, a database type of project, so it's a C plus plus Go. So it's not that easy to do a weekly release. But if your project, um, I mean, if your project is a Python project or it's a front end project. I will certainly encourage you to release once a week. That will that will help a lot. Second is, um, I wish we, we we set up a discuss forum uh, much earlier in the uh, in the project stage. I mean, so when we just open source movers, there is a there is argument regarding um, how which channel we should use to uh, host those uh, discussion and conversation with our community users. So that time, people were saying like, we should use, um, we should rely on, totally rely on Slack, WeChat. So those IMs are the, um, are the, are the tools uh, people use most nowadays. So not many people go to forum anymore. So don't, don't, don't set up a forum, it doesn't, it's meaningless but if you think about uh, if it, but if you think about the nature of uh, open source project we are not we are not doing social I mean the m main purpose of open source you join an open source community is n you're not doing social right you are you're discussing the technical problems and uh, um, you want to participate in some technical related stuff that's that's different from a social um, scenario. So actually, uh, most when I look on the uh, Google Analytics, n over ninety percent of visitors to our open source project website, they're using desktop computer. They're not using mobile. So which means, um, when if you're using desktop platform i think that will be much easier for users to use a forum instead of certain im because like the slack um the pricing model of slack um, determines i mean most even i will say every open source projects are using the free tier of slack which means you have a message limitation on ten thousand messages that's totally not enough for a open source project who wanted to uh, to to host some meaningful conversations so a discuss forum is in this way it's very important and will be very useful because people want to um, discuss the uh, questions uh, over their desktop and they probably will copy paste certain screenshot onto the uh, a forum and uh, for a better documentation and also um, a forum is easy for accumulate those Q&A stuff I mean if those Q&A stuff are in Slack or WeChat then you will have to ma manually uh, collect all those stuff and uh, uh, put, put it into some place so forums still have uh, um, advantages over those IM tools so now I'm just wish I, I we we set up a discuss forum um, earlier. Um, the last point is regarding the uh, how to sync up the project status with our community users. I hope we had a a monthly newsletter. Uh, we we talk with our users to sync up our latest uh, uh, progress in development and also uh, summarize the uh, uh, Q&A in this month and also share the trending for um, AIML industries. So I think that I believe that that is certainly will help to improve the uh, um, community communication. I mean, personally, I subscribe several uh, newsletters as well, and I think 
um, that's actually very helpful to to keep the uh, community users engaged. But um, to to set up a monthly newsletter, you you also need to spend additional effort, especially um, it's a challenge for your content team. But yeah, no pains, no gains. I mean. <laughs> If we, if we want to do the right things, then we, we need to invest a little bit more. Okay, so that's all I want to share today. Um, thank you for joining the session. Um, if you have any question, you can always find me on Twitter or on LinkedIn. Um, thank you for watching this session. Yang Jun from the Movies Project. Bye.